In this next video, I'm going to be talking you through 10 amazing pivot table tricks. Just leave a comment down in the description of how many you've learned through this lesson, be it one to 10. And if you've learned none at all, just leave a zero and I'll apologize after the video. Let's get into it. Pivot table trick number one. So here we have a pivot table with a order channel, product category, and then the quantity of sales for each of the categories. But I want to move this in-store sales up to the top because it's our biggest selling order channel. So what I can simply do is just go up into online and then simply type in in-store and that will automatically just pump in-store up to the top and move online and concession down. So a really quick tip, but sometimes the quick ones are the best ones. We can also do that with the product categories by just, again, just simply typing in and we can see that we can just rearrange those really quickly and effectively. Tip number two, remove the plus signs on groupings. So in this pivot table here, we've got our order channel and you can just see a little minus beside the online where if you press that, it just groups up that particular order channel. But what I see a lot of people doing is effectively copying a pivot table into a blank format. So if I control A, control C, and just then paste that over here to the right, we can see ultimately that gets rid of the plus signs, but there's an easier way to do that directly in the pivot table. So if I right mouse click anywhere in the pivot table, then go to pivot table options, and then just this little tick box here, expand collapse buttons, uncheck that, hit okay, and that's it, all gone, nice and clean. Tip number three, showing items with no data. So why would we want to do this? Well, let's have a look. So we have a very simple pivot table here with just our quantity of sales for each year. I can see in 2022, I've got Jan all the way down to December. But in 2021, I've got Jan and I'm missing February and I jump straight to March. Now, if you're a user or if you're an analyst and so on, you'll really want to make sure that you capture all the months and you've got the proper flow so that actually if there's any data that's hanging off the back of these pivot tables, that it's correctly pulled through. So how do we make sure that we capture all the February data? Well, it's really easy. All we need to do is click anywhere within our pivot tables, then just select field settings, show items with no data, just a little tick to that and hit OK and we can see February's gone in there. There's a couple of items gone in here, a couple of chart junk, so I'll just unselect those, that's not a problem. And then that's it. Nice and clean, really simple trick. Tip number four, adding calculations directly into pivot tables. So in this pivot table here, let's say I wanted to add in a 10% commission on top of the sales. So I could do that, outside of the pivot table by just multiplying the sales column by a 10% and then dragging that down. But we want to do this directly into the pivot table and make it dynamic. So how do we do that? Well, it's really simple again. We just select any cell within the pivot table. We'll go to pivot table, analyze, go up to fields, items, and sets, select that, and then calculated field. We want this new field to be called commission, we want that calculation to be our sales. And then we multiply that by 10% and hit OK. And then that's calculated our commission. Now what we can also do is we can add that in as a running total. So if I add in another commission column, so it's just a duplicate of the first one, select that column, right mouse click, and then what we want to do is we want to show values as more options, show data as, go to calculation, running total in, and then we just want to select the product categories for that and hit OK. And you can then see that that is effectively just a running total of this commission here. So the total of this is equal to 12,431, which is this one here. We can just change the header on that to running total 
and hit return and that's all done. Tip number five, grouping selections. So in this pivot table here for our product category of caps, we can see for each price point how many quantity we sold. So at the $7 price point, we sold 42 caps. But what I want to do is I want to make this into a nice small little table that I can put into a management report. So what I'm going to do is I can select these price points and I can group them into brackets. So how do I do that? Well, it's really simple. So I'll just right mouse click and just select group. I can start on any price points. So it's prompting me at five and ending at 27. It's saying grouping by one, but actually I want to group by five pounds. So for each five pound bracket, I want to group all of the caps together. So if I just hit OK, I can see that I sold 128 caps in the five to nine dollar bracket. But you can see also that I sold by far the most within the 10 to 14 bracket. So I sold 372. So a really nice, simple trick that you can use just to condense down data and just present it a little bit better. Tip number six, adding data bars to pivot tables. So if I take our previous pivot table where we had the caps and we had the quantity for each price bracket, I want to make this a little bit more visual and add some data bars. So all I need to do is just select the data, then go up to my home ribbon and into conditional formatting. Then I go to data bars and then more rules. And what I'm gonna do in here is just change the fill color to green and then I'm gonna have some solid borders in there as well. And then just hit okay. And you can see then it just overlays those data bars within our pivot table and just makes it a little bit more pleasing on the eye and a little bit more visual. Tip number seven, adding a timeline to a pivot table. So here we have a pivot table where I've got my product category sales and I've got a filter up the top, which allows me to filter for any month or any particular selection of months. But I want something a little bit more visual and something that looks a little cooler. So what can I do? I can add what's called a timeline. How do we do it? Well, it's really easy. We just select anywhere within the pivot table. Then we'll just go to the top of the ribbon where it's pivot table analyze. And then we just choose this option in the middle, which is just insert timeline. I'll just tick this date and then hit OK. Now, what it's done is it's defaulted in two days. So I'm just going to change that to months. And what this does is it just creates this slider that I can effectively select any month or range of months. And that will effectively filter this data here on the left and show me what was my sales for each of my product categories. So it's really visual, really cool and very simple to do. Tip number eight, adding year on year calculations into pivot tables. So what do I mean by that? So if we have a look at this pivot table here, we've got the sales for 2021 and the sales for 2022. Now what I want to do is I want to calculate out for January as a percentage, how much more did we sell in 2022 than we did in 2021. So we sold 5,942 in 2022 and 4,692 in 2021. So that's looking around a 22, 23% increase overall but I want to add that calculation into the pivot table. So how do we do that? Well, firstly, we'll need to add in an additional sales column. So that's just gonna be duplicating the existing sales. Then I'm gonna select that column and I'm gonna right mouse click. And then I want to show values as, and then go for more options. I'm just gonna drag that dialog box up a little bit and I'm gonna select show data as, and then I'm gonna select percentage difference from. Once that's selected, I'm then gonna select my base field as years because it's a year over year calculation. And then the base item, I'm gonna choose previous and just make sure my years are both selected and then hit okay. And what you can see then is it automatically then just drops in. So for January, I was a little bit out. So that's actually 26 and not 23%. But you can see the calculation for the rest of the year on year. And what I can do is I can just change the name of that column then as well on the top. And that will be year over year percentage. And that's it, nice and clean and all within the pivot table. Really, really cool. 
Tip number nine, adding custom number formats to pivot tables. So using our pivot table we had from tip number eight with our year on year percentages. But what if I wanted to make this a little bit more visual and instead of having these percentages maybe have an icon which would tell me whether I'm up or down year on year. Well, we can do that really easily. All we need to do is just select anywhere within the percentage year on year. Then we're gonna select number format and we're gonna select custom. I'm just gonna delete this general type. And what I'm gonna do is just select the windows and dot or the function E key on a Mac. And you can see I've already got some frequently used arrows within here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to put in the plus arrow. We put in a semicolon and then I'm gonna put in the down arrow and then just close that dialog box. Now what I want to do is the down arrow, I want to have that red, so I'm gonna put in my square brackets, put that in as red and then close my square brackets. And then on the up arrow, I want that green, so I'm just gonna do my square brackets and then just hit OK. And you can see then that automatically just drops in that formatting. So it's a little bit more visual, can just give you a better understanding very quickly of which of the months are up or down. So a really neat trick. Tip number 10, creating multiple pivot tables with just one click. So in this pivot table here, we have all of our different product categories. We have our price points and then the quantity we've sold at each price point. I've got a filter here for my three different order channels. And what I want to do is just create an independent pivot table for each of those order channels. But if we had say hundreds of order channels or hundreds of regions or whatever that filter was, it would take quite a long time to create a, a pivot table for each of those. So this next tip is gonna basically remove all of that and just create them all within just one click of a button. So let's just have a quick look how you do it. So you just select anywhere within the pivot table then we're gonna go up to pivot table analyze and within there just on the left here under options then we're gonna select show report filter pages select that and it will just say show all pages of order channel which is effectively what we've got filtered and then just select OK and you can see what that's done down the bottom then is it's created a separate tab for each of those order channels where it's independently filtered for those so like I say, if you had quite a big vast array of regions or order channels and you wanted to have a separate report for each manager, then this is a really efficient way of doing it and really cool way to do it. So what did you think? Which one was your favorite? Did you know all 10 or did you not know any at all? Let me know down in the comments down below. If you liked it, then just hit like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next video.